Okay, so today's topic is looking at where biodiversity is. So we learned about what biodiversity is, um, and now we're going to think about different parts of the planet that have really high amounts of biodiversity. So what is the first thing you think of? What kinds of areas have lots of biodiversity? So you probably said rainforests or coral reefs, and those are totally correct. But we're going to talk about a few other places as well. So I also want to talk about how many species do you think are on Earth? And estimates um, range a lot. So you may have said lots of different numbers. Um, but the best estimates seem to be between 5 and 10 million, but it could be up to 100 million species. So what do you think is the most speciose type of organism? And some of you may know the answer to this, um, and some of you may be surprised. And then what do you think is the most speciose type of animal? It's actually insects. There are way more insects than anything else on the planet. And a lot of people will say bacteria, and I think it is possible that that is true and that we just haven't described or found all the different kinds of bacteria because they find new kinds of bacteria all the time. Um, but right now it seems like um, insects are winning by a lot. And you can see that over half of the species that have been described, that means that they've been given a name and they've been characterized, over half of them are insects. Um, and you can see this shows estimates of described versus undescribed species. And you could say, how would you know how many undescribed species there are? Well, we can make estimates based on how many new species um, we find with each new study that's done of these different groups. And so we think that there are a lot more fungi to describe, and we think that there are actually a lot more insects to describe because we keep finding um, more and more insects. And you can see that there's an estimate all way off to the right of how accurate they think these estimates are. And so we don't know a ton about viruses and bacteria, so very poor understanding of those. Similarly, protists and algae. Um, we have a very good idea about vertebrates. Um, we have a good idea about plants. Um, but you know, there's a lot more to learn about fungi and spiders and insects and um, these smaller things as well. So if we broke it down, so we said insects um, are the most speciose um, of any group. What do you think within that, um, what kind of insects do you think there are the most species of? And the answer is beetles. A lot of people will say something like ants. Um, there are a lot of individuals of ants, um, but if we look at species, beetles take up by far the most, and 40% of described insects are beetles. So that's roughly half. If we look at this, we can see that almost a quarter of described species are beetles. That's crazy. So one in four species are beetles, roughly. Um, and if you look within beetles, most of the beetles are in a group called weevils, and they have these funky looking noses, and that's how you pick up a beetle, and it's got this funky looking nose, and the antenna are coming off of the nose. That is a weevil. There are more species of weevils than any other kind of beetle, which means more than um, pretty much any kind of anything. So. That's pretty interesting, I think, that insects, lots and lots of species, weevils, beetles, lots and lots of species. And so if we want to talk about conservation as a whole, we really need to include beetles in that because um, they make up so many of the species. And some of the in, um, estimates of how many species there are on Earth um, were thought about um, by um, a man named Terry Irwin. And the first estimates that were made, um, he started working on. 
Um, and basically, he was somebody that looked at insect species in tropical forests um, up in the tree canopies um, in the 1980s. And you can see this is a picture of him here um, with all of his trays of pinned insects. So he goes through and he looks at them very carefully under the microscope and um, puts them into different species. And so we were talking about species concepts before. That morphological species concept is very common in insects. So what he did was he put these big um, nets underneath trees. And you can see a picture down here. These are the nets. And then they would spray insecticides into the canopies of these tropical trees. And then all the insects would die. Well, maybe not all of them, but a lot of them would die. And they would fall into these nets. And they would collect all of them and take them back to the museum and look at them under microscopes and catalog them by species. And basically he found about a thousand different species of insects in only 19 individual trees in the rainforest. Um, and so he extrapolated this accumulation, so like how many new species he found in each tree. And knowing that rainforests um, are very biodiverse areas, he extrapolated this um, to estimate how many species there are on Earth. Um, and the current the estimate he came up with was about 30 million species. And, and as I said, um, most people think it's somewhere between 5 and 10 million. So this is thought to be an overestimate, but we still really don't know, which is kind of amazing to think that we've been doing so much science and been naming and cataloging species for so long um, that we still have no clue how many species there are. We just have this rough estimate, 5 to 10 million and up to 100 million. There's a lot of uncertainty in that number. So let's get to where on Earth biodiversity is found. Um, we talked about what groups of animals, um, or what, not animals, just what groups of organisms. Um, we've described um, different numbers of species. Um, and we know that diversity is not distributed evenly. So some places on Earth have lots of biodiversity and some have a lot less. The high diversity regions tend to be tropical forest, which is probably what you thought of when I first asked the question, coral reefs, which a lot of people also think of, marine habitats generally, and then areas with Mediterranean climates, which is probably something you haven't thought about. Um, so tropical forests, they only um, make up 7% of Earth's land area but they contain more than 50% of the world's species. So extremely biodiverse. If we wanna talk about conservation biology and conserving biodiversity, we have to conserve tropical forests because they contain half or more of the world's species. Um, some have suggested that more than half of the world's species are just tropical insects. Um, and so there's a lot of, um, diversity that we could work on with conservation biology just in tropical forests. Uh, we also know that other organisms are very diverse in tropical forests, so there are a lot of species of plants and birds um, in these forests as well. It's important to note that tropical forest doesn't just mean rainforest. Um, there are wet tropical forests, there are also dry tropical forests, and they're also very diverse. Um, and this is an example of a dry tropical forest um, picture here. So another place um, that we often think of and that totally has a lot of um, biodiversity is coral reefs. They only are about 0.1% of the oceans, but they harbor a third of the marine fish, marine fish species, excuse me. Um, and unlike tropical forest species, coral reef species are often widely distributed. So tropical forest species tend to be very rare and only in specific parts of tropical forests, whereas coral reef species, um, some of them tend to occur in many different coral reefs. Coral reefs are often associated with remote islands, so like Hawaii, um, and have many species that are found nowhere else, and that's called endemic. It's a species that is unique to a particular location. It occurs there and nowhere else. So um, if there is a species that occurs in the coral reefs around Hawaii and nowhere else in the world, it's endemic to Hawaii. Um, if there's a cave in Arkansas that has a species 
that lives there and nowhere else then it's endemic to that cave. And we see that 25% of Hawaii's coral species are endemic. So my example was actually pretty good because there's a ton of endemic species in Hawaii. Um, marine ecosystems are also very diverse. And so not just coral reefs, but all types of marine ecosystems. And this is thought to be because they first evolved in the oceans. Um, and there's been fewer large-scale disturbances in the oceans. Um, so that's a lot of time for evolution to occur and for new species um, to be developed in the ocean. Um, and so we think that's why marine ecosystems tend to be very diverse. They're also very connected, which can help. And so in oceans, um, part of these organisms that are very diverse include sponges, corals, and jellyfish. Another type of ecosystem that has a lot of diversity are those with Mediterranean climates. Um, Mediterranean climate, um, we think of the area around the Mediterranean Sea, the, or the Mediterranean Basin as it's termed here, but there are places all over the world that have these Mediterranean climates. California has a Mediterranean climate, Central Chile, the Western Cape of South Africa, and then Western and South Australia. And what makes it a Mediterranean climate is that it has a dry, hot summer and mild, wet winters. And we find tons of species of plants in these different Mediterranean climates. So now I just want to show you some maps to kind of look at global patterns of species diversity. Um, this looks at the Americas um, and birds. And you can see that birds are very diverse in the Amazon, particularly right where they come up against the Andes. So there's this elevation gradient, there's tropical forest below, and we get tons of species of birds. Mammals, we see, have a slightly different pattern, but still very diverse um, in the rainforests of South America and into Central America. This shows amphibians. And you can see again that they're associated with tropical forest. So there's a lot of amphibians in the Amazon, in Central America, in um, the Congo Basin of Africa, um, in the rainforests of Asia, as well as in Australia. We also have a lot of biodiversity in um, the United States for amphibians because we have the most salamander species um, in the world. So the Great Smoky Mountains or the Lower Appalachians, they have more species of salamanders than anywhere in the entire world. This is vascular plants. Um, so that's basically plants that aren't um, like mosses. Um, and we can see that there is high diversity in tropical areas. Um, and well, you'll get some of the Mediterranean climates being highlighted here. So like Mediterranean climate Mediterranean climate down here, um, and then a lot of the rest of these are tropical areas or places with elevation gradients. Um, we can also look at biodiversity hotspots, and these are areas that have really high um, levels of biodiversity. Um, and so you can see there's a lot of um, rainforest areas. We get the Mediterranean um, climates highlighted. Um, some tropical islands that have lots of um, endemic species. So again, species that are found there and nowhere else. 